everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to explain to you how to answer a very common exam question which comes up and this is related to reaction schemes. Now there are two types of reaction scheme questions that you'll see in both level 2 and level 3. One is where you've given a scheme with a whole bunch of boxes to fill out and the other one is where you're asked to create a scheme or a method or a procedure to get from compound A to compound B. This video is going to focus on the first of those, so filling out the boxes. Um, and I will do another one where I'm looking at how you actually create something yourself. Um, I'm going to focus for this video largely on level two, but the same concepts and skills apply for level three as well. Okay, so before you start, this is really important. Before you start, you need to have some sort of a flowchart or reaction scheme or list of reactions in your head so that you know what are the what are the different reaction types the the reagents the conditions etc to go from functional group a to functional group b and a lot of students once you've memorized one quite like to scribble this on the back of their exam paper when they start the exam so once you get in the exam you open up your papers Flip to the back page of your exam paper or um, the back of your periodic table or anything like that and just scribble it out very quickly. That way it's in your head to refer to later. However, and this is really important, there's no point in learning the reactions if you don't know how to use it. Now, what does this reaction scheme look like? Well, there are a couple of, there are a lot of different examples. Um, on the next, this slide here, this is one that's been created by Science Scribe, and this is very detailed. This is really good for learning, but it's not particularly good for scribbling in an exam question. Um, I've got a much simpler version, which summarizes the same kinds of things. I like color coding mine, and so if you'll bear with me, this is... You can kind of see here in a large whiteboard format my reaction scheme. I hate when the angle is the right way around. Um, it's got different colors for different types of reactions, so substitution, addition, elimination, and oxidation. And it's got the reagents written on there. So functional groups, reagents, and colors for the different functional groups. And that's all I have on my reaction scheme. And that's something. You can scribble it out um, in under 60 seconds once you've learned it. The level 3 one is more complicated, but it just builds on the level 2 one. So again, once you've learned it, it's pretty quick to scribble out. Okay, so when you're given an exam question, what do you do with it? Well, start by looking at what you already know. So if you've been given a molecule to start with or a product at the end think well what functional group is there what things react with that functional group what types of reactions does that functional group undergo if you've been given a product at the end what reactions form that product sometimes there could be several sometimes there might only be one um, if you've been given reagents think well what do those reagents react with um, what do they form if you've got major and minor products it's an absolute gimme because the only reactions that produce major and minor products are either addition reactions which start with alkenes or elimination reactions which finish with alkenes so as soon as you have major and minor products you know you must have an alkene somewhere in there and you've probably got either a halo alkane or an alcohol because your addition reactions that make major and minor products are only making halo alkanes and alcohols and the ones that form um, alkenes and elimination reactions are either coming from halo alkanes or alcohols so it's got to be one of those so there's some big clues to start with but really it comes down to logic so if we have a look at an exam question and this one was in the 2019 um, NCA exam level two was question two and you can see in the middle of this scheme we start off with propane and they've even told you that it's propane 
to start with, just in case you couldn't look at it and go, that's an alkene with three carbons, so it must be propane. And there's a lot of information in here. So if we look at first, going up from propane, going up to compound A, it tells you that it is polymerization. So if you are polymerizing propane, then the polymer must be poly propane so you can write that name down and to draw the structure of polypropane I recommend it this one was an interesting question because it didn't actually say how many repeating units that you should include but usually it's three so if in doubt draw three or at least two so my recommendation for drawing alkenes or sorry drawing um polymers is to start off with the alkene and you'll notice I'm going to show you the video show you um, something in a sec. Here we go. Okay. You'll notice that I've drawn the alkene it's propane. I haven't put the hydrogen out there. I've drawn three in a row, but I've drawn it so that the double bonds are lined up one after the other and everything else is coming off to the side. That's really quite useful. So once you've done that, all you want to do is take away the double bond, break it down to a single, boom, boom, and join them together. There, polypropane. I've pretended to put hydrogens on here as well. You can't just leave it like that. But leave the end dashes open. That's really important. Okay. So we started off, first step, we found compound A, it is polypropene. If we look down now, going to compound B, we've got a reagent there, which is water with H+. And we're told that it's got to form a major or minor product. Now remember I said, when you've got a major or minor product, it's got to be an addition reaction. And it's got to be making either an alcohol or a halo alkane. Now, if I look at H2O, then I can't make a halo alkane from H2O because there's no halogen in there. So, therefore, compound B must be an alcohol. There are only two possible alcohols, and it looks like either of them would be acceptable. So I could draw propan-1-ol or propan-2-ol in that box for B. Now, reagent 1 is the reverse of that one. So we're going from our alcohol to our alkene, that's obviously an elimination reaction, and this is one where you just have to learn the reagents. The reaction scheme you must, actually not, but if you've scribbled it down on the back page of your exam paper, all you need to do is look at it and go, oh yeah, the reagent for that is um, whatever it happens to be, in this case concentrated sulfuric acid. Okay, so now going down to compounds C and D. This time we are adding HBr. So that does have a halogen and a bromine. There's a major and a minor product again. So we know we must have haloalkanes. And because we've got bromine in there, it must be a bromoalkane. So the major product, remember, is the one where the halogen is added to the carbon with the least number of hydrogens. And the hydrogen is added to the carbon with the most hydrogens. So the major product's got to be 2-bromopropane. The minor product's got to be 1-bromopropane. If you weren't sure, you can look. Compound D, which is the minor product, is making compound E, which is an amine. And you'll notice where the amine is positioned on that molecule is at the end of the chain. So, therefore, the halogen in compound D must also be on the end of the chain, which makes it, again, 1-bromopropane. The last question part is asking you for reagent 2. So to get from a halo alkane to an alkene, again, this is one you just have to learn. It's got to be concentrated ammonia and alcohol. And so you should find that your answer will look something like this. Now this particular question had a wide range of um, 
there, there were quite a number of other questions that followed on after it. But once you've got this part of it done and you've got your reaction scheme, all of the other questions kind of work together as well. So you don't need to do heaps more. Or at least you need to be able to explain it. But the knowledge is all there. Okay, so that's how to go about answering a reaction scheme question. And it comes down to making sure you've learned those reactions first. And yes, that is a time consuming process. Uh, most people I know like to have a basic scheme similar to the one on my whiteboard that they've sketched out and then they will practice that over and over and over again until they can reproduce it very quickly in an exam condition. And that is one of the best ways to memorise something. Applying it obviously also requires practising these sorts of exam questions. So I hope you will continue doing that and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for your time.